York City explosion, the moment of terror caught on camera. I heard boom, and there was big black clouds like smoke. Dozens of people hurt, the blast going off in a popular and busy neighborhood. Because this was an intentional act. Windows shattering in buildings ah! and in cars, debris littering the streets. Pulling to help. Okay. The rush to treat the injured days from the explosion. Mira, mira, mira. Emergency vehicles swarming the scene. Ground shook and like windows shook. City streets and subway lines shut down and the frightening discovery, a secondary device, a pressure cooker with wires and a cell phone attached, bomb sniffing dogs, hunting for more. The urgent question this morning, was this an act of terror? The blast coming on the same day as a pipe bomb explosion at a marine charity run in New Jersey and a mass stabbing at a mall in Minnesota. Team coverage of a breaking story and the hunt for answers. From ABC News, live in New York, this is Good Morning America. Good Sunday morning, everyone. It's a very busy morning, so we're going to get right to the breaking news. That explosion on a crowded street in Lower Manhattan. Yeah, there's the surveillance footage of the moment the device went off on 23rd Street in the Chelsea neighborhood. Bystanders running away. First responders rushing to the scene. 29 people taken to the hospital. And moments later, just blocks away, a second suspicious device was found. A pressure cooker with a cell phone and wires attached, all wrapped in a plastic bag. Now, the mayor of New York says the blast was, quote, an intentional act, but says there is no evidence of terrorism right now. He may have been trying to calm fears, but the incident in Manhattan follows a pipe bomb explosion at a marine charity race in New Jersey and then a stabbing attack at a mall in Minnesota. We do have team coverage of this fast moving story, and we start with ABC's chief investigative correspondent, Brian Ross, who's in studio for, this, for us this morning. Brian, good morning. Well, good morning, Paula and Dan. An urgent, urgent search underway now for the bomb. A frightening night with one bomb exploded and a second device discovered a short distance away. And while the New York City mayor says there is no evidence of terrorism, investigators tell us it's still too soon to know for sure just who is responsible. The bomb came on a final summer Saturday night in a popular neighborhood on the west side of New York City. This surveillance video inside a fitness center shows the blast just after 8.30. A white flash as glass shatters. We do want to be very clear. Uh, the early indications, the initial indications, is this was an intentional act. Officials say the bomb appears to have been placed in a toolbox left next to the construction trash container. In one video obtained by police, a man is seen crossing the street in the vicinity of where the object was left. The trash container was blown clear into the street by the force of the bomb. The ground shook and like windows shook and there's like this big flash of light. Yet, incredibly, no one was killed. There were 29 injuries here, one considered serious. 24 of these people have been transported to area hospitals with various degrees of uh, scrapes, abrasions uh, from, from glass, from metal. Then, two hours later, and just four blocks away, police discovered a second device. In what appears to be a pressure cooker, found inside a plastic bag with wiring and a cell phone attached. The NYPD bomb squad removed the device as bomb-sniffing dogs searched the area for even more suspicious packages. And police at the NYPD Counter-Terror Center scanned surveillance videos from dozens of cameras looking for clues as to who was responsible. Police this morning say they still don't know if the second device contained explosives or just wires and a phone to replicate a bomb. But the fact that it was contained in a pressure cooker like this one is of great concern. This simple kitchen device is a favorite of terrorists around the world. There are recipes and instructions to build a bomb online. And of course, the two bombs set off at the Boston Marathon were both contained in pressure cookers just like this one. Remember the innocent days when these were simple kitchen devices? Exactly, right. Gone. Yes, exactly. Thanks. And they still don't know exactly what was in this one, but they've taken it to a, a location where they have a controlled detonation. Thank you, Brian. Our chief investigative correspondent will be back to you later in the show. Thank you.
Thanks again, Brian. And while authorities pour over surveillance cameras looking for clues, the blast left many people in the city on edge. And it came just hours after a pipe bomb went off along the route of a charity run in New Jersey, which was benefiting Marines and sailors. ABC's Lindsay Janice joins us from the Chelsea neighborhood in New York City, where residents' nerves are still rattled this morning. Lindsay, good morning. Good morning, Paula. That blast going off just behind the police van you see there, terrifying people and sending them running for cover. Chaos in Manhattan overnight. Hey now, hey now, hey now. After that explosion rocked a packed neighborhood in the city. It was like a just loud boom sound and we heard the shadow of the of the windows and everything else and we just ducked. Law enforcement officials descending on the scene. People fleeing the area in a panic. People started running up 23rd Street. 29 people injured by the blast that shattered glass and closed down city blocks and some subway lines. Bystanders rushing to help the wounded. I'm willing to help. Okay. Come with me. You okay? Nothing's gonna happen. This woman out for a bite to eat when she heard the explosion. Boom! So when it was like that, we were like, oh my God. And this Chelsea resident stopping to pick up a magazine on her way home when the blast erupted. It was really scary. And then I couldn't hear for 15 minutes out of my left ear. In the aftermath, that second device found just blocks away. We've just been moved out of this area near 26th Street. The police telling us it is a hot zone and they are looking at another device. Law enforcement sweeping the entire area. Looking inside trash cans, newspaper dispensers, even this bank lobby. Just hours earlier on Saturday, a separate explosion, 60 miles away in New Jersey. It sounded like a cannon. It was very, very loud. A pipe bomb detonating inside a trash can along the course of a 5K run for a Marine Corps charity. The explosion was probably 20 feet high and a large, round, dark smoke. Investigators discovering a cache of several devices, all timed to go off at 9.35 a.m., the intended start time of the race. And in Minnesota overnight, a knife-wielding man attacking eight people at a shopping mall. The suspect killed. Authorities saying he made references to Allah. Those eight people suffering non-life-threatening injuries in Minnesota and in New Jersey. That race so popular, so many people came out for it. Its start had to be delayed. And so when that pipe bomb went off, no one was injured. Dan, the New York mayor says it is early, but right now no apparent connection between that blast and the one here in New York City. But it is early. Lindsay Janice, we appreciate your reporting out on the streets in Manhattan overnight. Thank you. And moments ago, I spoke with a New Yorker named Joe Clark, who was right nearby when that explosion went off in lower Manhattan. Here it is. Joe, we really appreciate you coming on this morning. Where were you when you heard that explosion? I was actually in the uh, gap on 8th Avenue and 23rd, which is about an avenue away from here. And um, I was sort of in the front of the store, and, and I, I felt and heard the explosion. And and so you went in the direction of the explosion to check it out? There was some vehicle starting to respond, and so we started going towards what was going on. We could see some fire trucks already down here on the scene, and we started walking this direction. And in your pictures that you posted on the Internet, you see a lot of first responders, uh, the, some victims being treated. Did you get a lot of, did you see right. a lot of victims, and did you get a sense of widespread fear and panic in the area? I was watching the firefighters. I told my girlfriend, like, take a look at the firefighters and see how they're reacting. And they escorted the one gentleman I took the photos of over to, uh, over. they brought a chair and they sat him down over by one of the trucks right here on 7th Avenue and uh, 23rd, between 23rd and 24th. So I saw the one guy that I took the photos of. There were other people that came along a little later. So you felt confident based on the demeanor of these firefighters and by the demeanor of the other people in the area that this was not an exceedingly dangerous place to be. What we were told or what I heard was that it was between 5th and 6th, so we thought it was an avenue away, and actually it was just right here. It's amazing how unshakable New Yorkers can be, and I understand that you were actually near the <laughs> World Trade Center in 1993 when it was hit by a bomb. Did this give you sort of a, a flashback? Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely did. In fact, the sort of the, the jolt and the noise that I heard was very similar and also the people's reactions. Joe Clark, we're really glad you're safe and very grateful to you for coming on this morning. Thank you very much. Thanks so much for having me. Paula, over to you.
Thanks, Dan. I have a perspective on what's happening right now with this investigation. We want to bring in Nick Casale, former NYPD, as well as Homeland Security. Nick, thanks for joining us. So I, I want to go back to New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio, who said this was, quote, an intentional act, but then went on to say, quote, there's no evidence at this point of a terror connection, but we're so early in the investigation, how can he be ruling out terror? Well, I don't think he's ruling it out. I think he's, he's being cautious, and I think caution is prudent at this point. You don't want panic. So, you know, a terrorist act is any, any act of violence uh, against the people to instill terror in them so that they can go to the government to have them change foreign policy. But what we see here is Mayor de Blasio and Commissioner uh, James O'Neill uh, I think it's his second day in office, so uh, they're going to take the cautious approach, and they're not going to instill panic in the people. Yeah, just trying to calm people and their fears right now. I want you to look at, at everybody to look at the map and, and what happened and when there was that explosion in Seaside, New Jersey, in the morning. Then about 12 hours later, the blast in the Chelsea neighborhood of New York City, and then that suspicious-looking pressure cooker device was found just a few blocks away. Right now, is there anything that leads you to believe that these three are connected? There's no reason to believe that they're connected, but no investigator will not rule out some form of connectivity, how they, they may or may not be together. So what they're going to do is they're going to coordinate the investigation, share information between investigators in New York and in New Jersey. They'll come at some point with a decision if they are or are not connected. And they're going to be looking at that pressure cooker this morning as well. Well, the pressure cooker is great because they have the pressure cooker. It was removed by uh, the New York uh, City bomb squad to Rodman's Neck, uh, which is where their explosive unit is. And they have it. They'll make the decision whether they're going to explode the device to gather evidence or they're going to attempt to deactivate the device or they're going to use uh, uh, different uh, techniques that they have to see inside it okay. if there is a device. All right, Nick, we really appreciate your insight this morning. That's a very busy morning for you. Thanks for coming in. Dan? Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Paula. The explosion in Manhattan immediately, of course, sent ripples right out onto the campaign trail. Donald Trump coming out early, calling it a bomb before officials had even confirmed that information. Hillary Clinton pouncing on Trump for that. ABC's Mary Bruce is on the story from Washington. Mary, good morning to you. Good morning. We are already getting a glimpse this morning into how Trump and Clinton would react as president. Overnight, both responding, but in very different ways. And already, it is becoming political, with Clinton seeming to scold Trump for his swift conclusion. Overnight, Donald Trump was quick to respond to the explosion in Manhattan, speaking out after initial reports. Just before I got off the plane, a bomb went off in New York, and nobody knows exactly what's going on, but boy, we are living in a time we better get very tough, folks. Describing it as a bomb even before the cause was confirmed. Two hours later, after landing back home in New York, Clinton took a more cautious approach. We have to let this investigation unfold. I'll have more to say about it when we actually know some facts. And she took a swing at Trump. I think it's uh, always uh, wiser to wait until you have information before making conclusions. Both candidates are being criticized by former Defense Secretary Robert Gates for lacking national security plans. But in the Wall Street Journal, Gates writes that Trump is beyond repair and unfit to be commander in chief. He's a nasty guy. Trump is hitting back. When they leave office, they criticize everybody. I don't like critics. I don't like critics. I like the people that get it done and get it done right. Now here at the White House, the president has been updated throughout the night. He has yet to respond publicly. Dan and Paula. All right, Mary, thank you. And for more on all of this, let's bring in ABC's Martha Raddatz, who's also in Washington, where she will be hosting this week later this morning. We know you have a big show to prepare for, Martha, so thank you for joining us. But we want to ask you, how were both candidates viewed as commander-in-chief, but particularly in moments of crisis, such as what we're seeing right now in New York and New Jersey? Well, Paul and Dan, moments like these are critical because they show voters how each candidate would handle the many crises they're sure to face in the White House. And these two, as we see, could not be more different. You saw Hillary Clinton come out with that careful statement, sticking to the facts as she awaits more information. That's really indicative of her style as Secretary of State. Contrast that with Donald Trump, who shoots from the hip, starting his rally last night with the news of what he called the bombing. To some, it's an aggressive style that carries lots of risk. But to others, after eight years of a measured commander-in-chief, 
some aggression they appreciate. So we're eight days away now from what could be a pivotal moment, the first presidential debate. How high are the stakes for these two candidates, and what do we know about how they're getting ready? Well, it, it's such an important moment in this race, the last real variable where the candidates will be head-to-head -head without teleprompters or advisors on the same stage. But barring any major meltdown, these debates don't usually redefine the race. Instead, what they tend to do is reinforce voters' ideas of each candidate, and that's just as important. Both are practicing. We're not sure it's exactly the same between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. All we've seen of her is those massive briefing books. Not quite so much with Donald Trump. And Martha, we should point out that you will be co-hosting, the co-moderating the second debate, uh, which will come up shortly after the first one. So Martha, thank you. And I want to remind everybody that Martha has a big show this morning. She goes one-on-one -on -one with both of the vice presidential nominees, Democratic Senator Tim Kaine and Republican Governor Mike Pence. That's on this week, later this morning, right here on ABC. And we do want to remind you that you can download the ABC News app and get live streaming breaking news reports from the campaign trail for all of you that just can't get enough of politics. And if you can't get enough of the weather, then th I don't know we what got a you, guy for you. We can, you can download Rob Marciano. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, that'll take you far too long and not a whole lot of content there. <laughs> hey, guys, uh, good morning again. I want to show you uh, this picture out of uh, uh, Cheyenne Wells, Colorado, a land spout, basically a weak tornado that uh, developed from a non supercell storm. Uh, obviously, an open land there, so not a whole lot of damage. I want to show you this also this video out of Norman, Oklahoma. Um, no reports of a tornado with this, but it may have been rain wrapped in there. Nonetheless, there were some, uh, some hefty winds and, and some thunder and lightning just to up the road in Stillwater. They actually had to delay the OSU game uh, later in the day because in the fourth quarter because of lightning. And a number of football games either delayed or postponed. One in Odessa, Texas, as well, is postponed until this morning uh, because of uh, some action with the thunderstorms that rolled through, even Louisville. The game yesterday at uh, 12 p.m. getting some rain and thunder. This front, very slow mover. It's going to squeeze some of the moisture. Some of the moisture from Julie getting up into this. So the next 24 to 48 hours will produce one to two inches, hopefully upstate New York, western New York, and parts of New England who needs the rain, and then maybe locally a little bit more than that and through Virginia. Uh, that's Julia also watching Tropical Storm Carl, which could become a hurricane, make its way toward Reno or the U.S. by next weekend. That's a quick check on what's going on nationally. Here now is what's going on where you live. Good Sunday morning, and if you're heading out to the Redskins game, kickoff is at 1 o'clock today. Mostly cloudy and rather humid. Feels like temperature around 90. Slim chance for some wet weather. The heavy rain really moving in for the overnight hours tonight. Temperatures will be above average. Take a good look at your seven-day extended forecast. Some wet weather hangs on into early Monday. Could slow down your morning commute back to work. Tuesday, Wednesday, though, we clear out quite nicely, and our temperatures will remain above average. More weather coming up, and we, I'll post some of these on Twitter so that you can download the graphics. Not me, thankfully. That'll be later on in the morning, and more uh, weather in about 20 minutes. Dan Paul back. Yeah, the download Rob Marciano app is now trending above Pokemon Go. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Rob. Right, uh, a lot of other news this morning. For that, as always, we get it over to Dr. Ron Kelly. Warren. Good morning, sir. Hey, good morning to you, Dan and Paula. Good morning, everyone. We began in Syria, where a U.S. airstrike targeting ISIS fighters instead hit Syrian government troops, killing more than 60 and injuring 100 others. The U.S. military is saying that the attack in the eastern part of Syria, which is not covered by a week-old truce in that country, bombed the Syrian forces by mistake. The U.N. Security Council held an emergency meeting Saturday night at the request of Russia, which is demanding an explanation. And a deadly bus crash in North Carolina kills four people and injures 42 others. Police say the charter bus, carrying a college football team and its coaches, blew a tire, causing the vehicle to hit a guardrail. The team from Rock Hill, South Carolina, was traveling to a game in Fayetteville in North Carolina. And new details about the suspected gunman went on a fatal shooting spree in West Philadelphia Friday night. He's been identified as 25-year-old Nicholas Glenn. Officials saying that they found a note from him titled Doomed, in which he wrote about his dislike of police. Two police officers were among the six people wounded. One woman who was in a passing car was shot and killed. Police killed Glenn in a shootout with that gunman. And drivers in the southeast pulling up to empty gas pumps as a crews work to fix a leak in a major pipeline responsible for the fuel shortages. Governors from six states declaring states of emergency. The governor of South Carolina, in fact, issuing an order allowing more fuel truck deliveries. Other states also easing up on gas delivery restrictions. And in Arizona, a small plane catches fire mid-flight 
crashing into a home, but check this out. All four passengers, they were skydivers on their way to a local fair, so they, along with the pilot, jumped out of that plane wow. before it crashed and landed safely. The skydivers were unharmed. The pilot's being treated, though, for burns. The people inside...